All right, how you guys doing? This is uh, Ronnie Fernandez, LCSW, licensed clinical therapist, and I'm here with Miguel Chavez, who is also an LCSW licensed clinical therapist. And uh, we did it. Uh, we had a talk uh, a couple weeks ago, and we just thought it was great. And there's um, other things that we we think we should we should talk about. So we're gonna go ahead and just talk about it and see kind of where it goes. Um, and uh, one of the things that we talked about was was kind of like man's emotions and. Um, you know, and, and, and kind of focusing on crying, you know, I know that's a kind of a big thing of right now with, with, uh, with boys, you know, of, you know, about showing more emotions. So, um, yeah, Miguel, would you introduce yourself a little bit, a little bit of an introduction and we can get to go ahead and go with the conversation. All right. So yeah, I'm Miguel Chavez and, uh, LCSW. I'm part-time ther licensed therapist, part-time, uh, YouTube content creator, <laughs> um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, yeah, the, these discussions, uh, I was thinking about, you know, this topic on, um, on crying. You know, as, as a male growing up, it's always kind of, there's mixed messages about, um, you know, about the expression of emotion. And, and I think over time, it's also changed, you know, uh, because since I was a little kid compared to now, maybe some of, some of the things that we, that we were told, some of the messages that we were told when we were young, they may have changed. So, you know, just kind of thinking about, you know, the, the, the Latino male experience of like, you know, the, this thing about expression of emotions and crying itself, you know? Yeah. And, and cause I remember as a kid, I mean, we're not, we weren't supposed to cry. Right. I mean, if you, if you fell <laughs> and you hurt yourself, it was, you need to get back up. You know, there wasn't, you know, um, you know, we called a sissy, we call it, you know, you'd be called all these type of things. And so now I feel like it's kind of changing a little bit. You know, and, and, and I think even in, in the culture of kind of like, um, we're talking about like with George Lopez and his kind of, um, uh, you know, when he talks about it, you know, why are you crying, that type of stuff. But I, I just feel like it's, it's kind of changing now. Do you feel like it's changing where kind of men and boys are like encouraged to cry a little bit? Yeah, there, there's definitely a change. I mean, I, I actually went back and I was looking at some segments of that, of that George Lopez uh, video, the, the one that said, why are you crying? Yeah. And, and the, the examples that he was providing, and of course, you know, it's funny stuff, you know, it's comedy. Uh, it's, a, it's an entertainment piece, not an educational piece, you know? Right. <laughs> you, don't, you don't go get, you know, your research from a comedian. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, it's, it's, he was presenting like the example of when a kid like is crying because of, you know, something like a, you know they got hurt or something and then or 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 they got like disappoint disappointed about something like they didn't get what they wanted and yeah. there's tears coming out and the idea of like why are you crying like you know i'll give you something to cry about you know and like getting a spanking or you you know because of the crying so so it's weird because that in, in that huh. it's like you know, you're going to spank a child for expressing emotion or crying yet the result of that is going to be crying in itself I remember hearing that as a kid too. Like I remember hearing like, "Why are you crying? I'll give you something quick to cry about." Right? Is that is that a guy thing or is it more of a like a Latino thing? Growing up, you know, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I've heard that. I, I remember, I remember that as a kid. Anytime I kind of hear, you know, remember back about getting hit or showing type of emotions, it was like, you know. I don't know how often my parents did it. I don't think, you know, they weren't very abusive or like that, but I, re I remember that threat, you know, and I still remember to his, to that, to this day. I, I think it, it, you know, of course there's also going to be variances within families because some families, like in my family, I'll give an example. My father, he was not verbally expressive, like a lot. He, he was, he was a very reserved man. And so was his mm -hmm. mom, my grandmother. She was very reserved. Even in the photos, she comes out as very reserved. No smile in the photos. Uh, as a woman, you know, with yeah. men, that's expected. You know, all my uncles, because, uh, see, my family is from the rancho in Mexico. And so for them, when they took those pictures um, of, oh, you yeah. know, the family pictures, the men, there, there mm -hmm. was no smiling photos. Mm -hmm. It was always like this, this really like a, like a statue, like strong kind yeah. of thing. So I, I think that it, it came from from that of like, being a protector of the family. In fact, uh, the machismo originally was around that, about protecting your family. Yeah. I, I guess if you think of the context of, of the times that they were living in, I mean, right now we have modern technology where, where something goes down, I can record it and I can submit it on social media or I can call 911, all this stuff, right? But when you're in the rancho, and we're talking like, you know, like decades and decades ago, I mean, I remember 
the first time when I went to visit where my parents lived, there was no running water and there was no electricity. <laughs> yeah. So I remember having to grab pails of water and we would bring it back to the house. And even with electricity, we would, we would uh, you know, <laughs> we'd have to go buy some, some petroleo, you know, and then we would use lamps like that. And so the, so the different times where you didn't have that. So should something go down, you're the protector of the family. So I guess it, it may have come from something around that protection of the family and not showing like a weakness, so to speak, to other people so that you're not expressing some vulnerability where someone else can come and like, let's say, do harm to your family, steal you, rob you or stuff like that. Because you don't have 911 back in the days, you know? You yeah, know yeah. So the context, I think it worked out for them during that time. Correct, you yeah. to America <laughs> and things are different. Yeah, I think it's a little bit different, but I think we've also lost that kind of stuff too. Like, I think that stuff's important to feel like you're the protector of the family. You're the one that's keeping, you know, um, this is my family. It's my responsibility. And, and I, I think we've kind of lost that too, though, you know, where, where it was more of the family, family was kind of the base. And I think now it's, it's kind of changed. It's kind of more individual. You, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it, it, but even the idea, maybe even the concept of uh, of what it what it looks like, that protection of what a protector looks like, that may have also changed too. Because modern day, really, like if you have like uh, knowledge about the law, I mm -hmm. mean, that's like you're on a high level of protection, you True. know, versus someone who's just going to be a tough guy that can fight. I mean, <laughs> you're going to go to court. It doesn't matter if you got tough skills, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So th there, I'm not saying that that you know that the 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 physical aggression or or the need for anything that it's not there anymore it, it certainly is and i think that's important but there's also this kind of like in addition to you got to know other things like about the law you know you, you got to be prepared with things like that because that's the system that we currently live in this is a you know in a law and order society yeah yeah and i think i think you're right and it's it's changed and I, and i know i mean again like growing up it was like you, you don't cry like any kind of emotions was kind of was definitely frowned upon if not like you know we, we, we it was it was it was pretty bad if we showed any kind of emotions and then now you, and i think especially with so much information being available you know like that all the information you need is in the palm of your hand so now it's 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 kind of different man it's kind of it, you need that balance of you know of of being being able to like protect but also being um i don't know like understanding more more aware of of kind of what's going on as well well before it was just i need to provide and they need to protect and that was it you know yeah. and i think that's kind of where our parents kind of came from absolutely and it, um you know and, and i was thinking of you know like with, so with my dad there was never this message of of you're not supposed to cry but there was this kind of like you know like like uh maybe like it's and not only it wasn't spoken so there wasn't i don't remember any specific words you know where my dad's saying like like boys aren't supposed to cry you know yeah. But you know, I don't think it was so much even in the home. It was really all over the place. Cause I even had a teacher that was in third grade, and, and he was also come from you know that different generation. And and he, there was always this expectation of boys that he had about tough and and rough, and uh, and then girls cannot protect themselves. And and it's you know it's it, it was all over. I think it, when I was a kid, it was all over society. And in my home, my dad, he wasn't very expressive emotionally. So he wasn't the type of guy that was going to shed some tears or talk about, you know, some kind of trauma or anything like that. He was always like, you know, holding himself together. That's what I, that's my image of my dad, of a man who always held it together, a man who always like was, was repairing and getting things done in the house. And, you know, of course, responsible too, you know. Yeah. And my dad, he was, he was actually the emotional one. <laughs> My it was it was a little different. I think my dad was more of the emotional one, more of the hugs and more of that that kind of thing. But it was still that like you're not going to show a lot of emotions type thing. But I think that was more of a society type thing. Because I mean, I played football. I was really you know just kind of like uh um like just kind of I don't know just more athletic. So in that kind of field, you had to like you know you you were kind of raised to be tough like with baseball and with football. And so, I don't know, but I still knew that I had to, to I, I didn't, wasn't able to show feelings and emotions a lot, you know. 
But uh, yeah, and I, I, it's definitely changed over time since I was a kid to now. Because I talk to people that are a little bit older than me, and I ask them those questions about, you know, like, uh, you know, do men are men supposed to cry and stuff like that. And and it's interesting because I, I, you know, from people that that come from that generation and they're older now, and they're saying like, of course men cry, you know, they they acknowledge it. You know, so so there is this kind of like acknowledging that those were the messages, and at the same time, uh, you have this evolution of society, or at least here, because you know, for for the immigrant family, it's going to be different because they it may have worked in in that you know environment, but here we are in in, in the U.S. and you know, or not just in the U.S., but I mean, we're talking like the city, you know, or even suburbs, you know, compared to the rural communities, because you know the the cowboys here are very similar to the cowboys in Mexico. You know, there's a lot of similarities between them. Um, and, and, and definitely, you know, I, I, I do think it's changed over time. So there is a little bit more acceptance, which, which I was happy to hear. I was talking to my neighbor about that. And he said, yeah, like any guy that, that thinks that, you know, the men don't cry, I mean, that's BS. <laughs> yeah. But it's, I don't know. I, I think now it's kind of a balance. Like I, I think, especially with, with the educational system and with, you know, with, with, uh, um, social media, I think kids, boys are, are really encouraged and I think even with the you know with the mental health piece like I think we're, we're we're encouraging kids to show their emotions but I think there's also a different piece when we when we do that too much or when there's too much you know you kind of show everything where you're going to see that increase of anxiety you know and that real I don't know I, I I've seen a lot more anxiety in boys than 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 I used to you know it was a lot more worrying or before, maybe maybe we were just told to hold it, you know, to to hold it in, and now kids are expressing it now, and and I think a lot of people don't know what to do with that, you know, <laughs> when they actually share their feelings. I, I think it might make people feel uncomfortable when people when when boys and men actually do. Well, you bring up uh, you know an interesting dynamic there because there is this piece of like uh, of you know they're like with humans like if someone else has a certain emotion it can someone else can can you know so to speak feel it you know so there's this transference of energy sometimes and you know with as far as like even with with crying so sometimes watching someone in pain crying can you know elicit that from you from yourself and, and how comfortable the person may feel themselves about that you know about you know hey i may cry because that person's crying there may be a, a desire to shut it down there. And there are certain environments where that's okay, like a therapeutic setting, perfectly fine, right? Yeah. You know, express all your emotions, whatever, punch the pillows, yeah. all you want to do, you know, uh, cuss them out. But, you know, maybe in certain other environments, it may not be conducive or producive, you know, to the person where it's like you, you, you may not want to show emotions, uh, you know, or, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking of more, and what I was thinking about there was I think I heard one of your talks about, like, let's say in the work environment or something and you have a supervisor, you know, mm. crying in front of your supervisor, you know? Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, it's like, I think that's still kind of like, eh, you know, yes or no. It's, I think there's going to be people on, on both sides of the aisle, you know, still there. Well, I, I, I think that's the bigger piece. I, I, I think we need to, like, I, I don't know if you've ever cried in front of somebody or, or anything like that, it it's it's totally uncomfortable and it'll they'll you know i remember in uh in in school it was said never never grab never grab a tissue for somebody if they start crying you know because that's telling you like oh i can't take it anymore you need to stop you need to wipe those tears off so you have to let them cry so it's it's uncomfortable man if you're not really trained in it like you know seeing another man cry is like I mean, every time that, that I've gotten emotional, even with women, you know what I mean? Even if it's, you know, my wife or something like that, it's that un uncomfortable type of type of thing where most people are not used to that, especially in men, if men cry. Is there an element of like, because it's going to make you cry? I think it's just uncomfortable if, if you're not, if you don't understand it. If, yeah, and, that, and so, you I, know, I if think, we think a little uh, bit deeper than that, where does that un uncomfortable come from, you know? I don't know. I, I think it would just be that I, I, I hardly ever see a, a man cry. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, I don't think I've ever seen, I mean, I, I have, but like not being a therapist, you know, it, it's maybe, you know, like four or five times. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, I think that that's something to you know to think about a little bit more about where does that discomfort come from? Because you know, biologically, we know, right? It's like you know, there's a, an expression of emotion. It's intense. I mean, the the brain is wired so that the emotional centers and the tear ducts are connected, and so there is going to be that production. You know, uh, so that's a normal thing, right? <laughs> and yeah. yet here we are saying that that's uncomfortable. That's kind of interesting, right? It is because I I think and. I, I I think if you see a man cry, you're like, oh crap, these are really going down. You know what I'm saying? Like, it may, maybe feels unsafe. You know, that I think that's what it is. Like, if this dude's crying, like, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be bad. You know what I mean? And, and I think maybe that that's what it is, too. You know, like it's just, I don't know, man. It's I, I think, yeah, I think it's a big. That's more of an issue of, like, yeah, we can tell kids to cry or we can tell men to cry. But what's the response going to be? And usually is not, I don't think it's going to be good for someone that's not trained in it or someone that's, you know, said like, you know, that are kind of, it's kind of like giving up, giving information about it. Right. So let's think about like, you know, I was thinking about some of my clients and how in the past I've had clients where like the women, the Latina women were mm -hmm. telling their sons, don't cry. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, cause we, we generally think of that message being propagated by men, right? Correct. We're always like, oh, yeah, the men are the one that are, you know, but but I've heard Latina women, the moms, a lot of times, you know, yeah. even even, <laughs> even my girl. OK, she tells my boy, like, don't cry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think I think that's that's important, too. It's, it's not just like the guy culture is I think it's just a culture in general where if the boy is crying, you know, and, and I think and again, I, my main my, my thing with this argument is. I, I think you have to reserve as a boy or as a man, you have to be able to hold your feelings most of the time. I think you do because the way other men deal with trauma or what they're going through is through aggression. And so if you have a, another boy that's, that's been through trauma or is going through some, a narrative experience, he's going to take it that out physically. If he sees some sort of weakness in another kid, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's more of that dynamic that, I'm kind of concerned about when people say, Hey, you need to show your emotions. It's just like, I think you have to be careful for, especially for other boys. And other yeah. I, and I think that touches back upon that originality that I was saying about the, the protection, you know, cause you definitely, you will be seen as vulnerable. Uh, so there, yeah. are, I think it's the context that's important. You know, uh, it's not, it's not a one standard rule where, where boys don't cry or boys do cry. It's more of like uh, contextually, uh, there are certain scenarios where it may be, be it's beneficial, right? Because there's a release, there's a you know release of stress. There's a there, it, it, the function of crying. Um, you know, because I was doing a little bit of reading on it, and of course it's it's for stress relief and it clears your eyes and people do feel better. So there is this therapeutic experience behind it. Um, but I guess you're right about, you know, there are certain situations where you may, you may not um, want to do that. And, and I guess when there's maybe some competition or like in a school setting where you're going to continue to see people and, and they could make fun of you. Uh, so when there is a potential, you know, for, for someone to be victimized, I would say, maybe yeah. that's not the best uh, context for it. Yeah. Cause I think there's a difference. Like I grew up, so I spent, you know, uh, some, you know, part of, part of my childhood in, Alhambra, which was very nice, very, you know, very, very safe, and in East LA. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so there's a totally different dynamics there, you know, when I felt safe and when I didn't, and kind of like, was able to show emotions and I, and I clearly was not able to. So I, I think when we tell boys that they need to cry and they need to like show emotions, we also have to be aware of their, of their surroundings. And, and I, I think what we're trying to say is, and I don't get me wrong, is it's it's a big it's big on safe on if it's if it's a safe environment to go ahead and share your feelings and and even to cry. Yeah, I was I was I was thinking about you know when you were saying about the environments about East LA, I was thinking about that there was a video that came out and and it was um you know how the fathers and sons and then they were focusing on like minority like uh. Um, and, and how the idea of like, they can't even express this to say, I love you, you know, where the, the guys were saying, my dad has never said those words, I love you. 
and, and they were interviewing both of them and, and even together. Uh, and some of those, the men were able to, and there was tears and there was coming out, right? And these are tough guys, you know, dudes with like yeah. tattoos and stuff like that. And, and, and they were with their dads. And it was beautiful. I mean, and even me as a viewer, I was crying at the yeah. end. You know, <laughs> <It's> like, <Yeah. laughs> and I was yeah. okay with that. Of course, I I'm, yeah. I come from the side where I'm comfortable with tears. You know, I don't. You know, it's like that's just with me. You know, <laughs> yeah. a little bit different. You know, uh, uh, and, and so definitely that was an interesting video to see where where the young men, you know, they, they were like our age or so in twenties or thirties. You know, and and they were they were able to to acknowledge saying, "My dad's never said I love you." But here is my dad, and, and, you know, it turns over, it looks at him and says, I love you, dad, for everything you did. And some of the men, the, the dads, you know, were crying, um, but they, they could, still couldn't say either, I love you, yeah. you know, to their son. Some of them did, some of them didn't. So it varies, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's, a, it's a different day. It, Maybe we should put a link to that, right? We'll, we'll put a link yeah, to that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> send, send it to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll put it on there. Cause and then people can share their comments about, about what they think about that, right, in the comment yeah. section of the video. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think we want to do these videos where we're, we're providing information, but it's we're at a point where it's a discussion. You know what I mean? It's yeah, well, not, we don't have all the answers, right? No, we don't. And, and Unless I mean, you do, Ronnie. You got all no, the answers? <laughs> no, I don't, because then I learn something, and then it changes. So, And, and I think it's, it's kind of – it just depends on your situation. It's hard to – to like generalize like okay it, you boys do need to cry boys don't need to cry and you show emotion it's just, it just kind of it depends on your environment it depends on you personally and I, I think overall it's like your your feelings about yourself I, I think that's what's most important you know if you have a strong if you have strong self-esteem you know who you are you're not going to care what everybody else thinks you know but if you have those insecurities you're worried about other people what other people think then that's when I feel like sometimes you get in trouble. Yeah, and maybe, and I was thinking of, uh, you know, the word healthy about, you know, whether, when is it healthy? And I think it varies from person to person does, you know, for yeah. them. Yeah, and, that, you know, so there, so, you know, I agree with the side of you that says, you know, like, like that, that we shouldn't be prescriptive in that, and to say that, you know, all boys should, you know, it's like, it's more of like, you know, if it happens and that is comfortable for you and it's healthy for you, then by all means, you know? That's hard to tell though, man. That's hard to tell, you know, especially if you're <laughs> <From> a, you. <laughs> a boy, you're like, ah, oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? But, but, but you, I mean, I think, I think like what I would advise is you have to find at least at the bare minimum, find a way to channel that, you know, if, if, if like, look, you're getting picked on and you're showing you, you're a little more emotional, you need to lift weights. You need to, you know, start, you know, picking yourself up. Like, I, I, you know. By the bootstraps? <laughs> no, but maybe it's something that you need to change. You know what I mean? Like, I knew I was a little more emotional kid. I had a lot of anxiety. So I knew what helped me was being able to lift weights and, you know, become more of an athlete. So I didn't have to, like, I didn't have to be so, you know, like, buttoned up. Like, I was able to you know, if you're bigger and you seem stronger, you, you, I felt like I had a lot more, uh, I guess, confidence with it, you know, with it. So, so I was able to kind of, I don't know, grow, grow that confidence and, and be a little, little more like myself. But, but it, I think it just depends, man. I, I, I wouldn't want to generalize and saying you should or you shouldn't. I, I think that's part of kind of like the life, you know, kind of like the process. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the idea that, you know, just kind of like prescribing one, um, you know, for everyone blanketing across the board, you know, that's not going to work out, you know, because there are variances in this. And, 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 you know, and that's why when I heard you talk about that, I think in, in one of the interviews, I was like, whoa, I, I've never heard this from Ronnie. I want to hear this. <laughs> Which one? Which one? But when you were saying specifically about that, that, that you don't, that we have to be careful about telling boys to express themselves completely, you know? Yes, yeah. because of, mostly of, because of what other boys that, that may have trauma, that may have, you know, um, you know, just kind of in a bad space, how they find that as weakness, you know what I mean? Like, and, and not saying that you're, you're weak because if you cry, or I'm not saying that, I'm saying that some some people see that as you know as weakness, and if they're in a bad space, they might want might want to take advantage of you, you know, and 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 kind of look at you kind of as prey, you know. So I don't think 
I would, I would, I mean, I wouldn't suggest, Hey, you should show your feelings all the time. I think you need to channel that fit the, those thoughts. If you're, if you're in East LA, if you're in a bad area or you're, you have, you know, uh, classmates or whatever that are not very nice, <laughs> you need to start lifting weights and start getting, you know, being ready to defend yourself, I think. Yeah. And in, in those environments that we were talking about, like for me, I was talking about, you know, the environment of the Rancho in Mexico, where you don't have, you know, the 911 ready to, to come at your aid ASAP. Uh, you know, in those environments like that, definitely there there is that protective, that, that need for, to protect yourself and your family. Um, and then, of course, in, in the areas where you have a high rates of gang violence and, and drugs and, and where the police are, have a history of police brutality, um, certain areas like that, I could see how that's also uh, protected in that, in, in those environments, too. Uh, but then you think about other environments where they don't have to, you know, like, let's say, you know, kids in like Beverly Hills, you know, where it's like, you're not going to have to, you know, look all tough and, and, and be all ripped up and <laughs> in order to defend yourself. I mean, yeah, but not I think to it, say that, that there aren't exceptions, right? But, you know, yeah. generally speaking. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe people in those, in those areas now, like, I don't know, man, things are changing so much, you know, it's just, it's just hard to generalize right now because people, you know, it, yeah, I, I just don't like when people generalize. <laughs> I, I, and, and we can provide information and see what works best, but we, we don't know, man. We don't know, especially kids now. There's just so much information out there. And I'm seeing a lot more kids trying to diagnose themselves. You know, I got depression. I got anxiety. Just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. you know, let's, let's talk about this and let's process it. You hear me? Like, what's really going on and more than just diagnosing themselves? I'm seeing that a lot. I'm seeing that Do a lot. You- do you see a difference in like, um, like a boy? Because I don't, you don't have a boy, but you have daughters, my understanding, right? Yes, I have two girls. Yeah, and do you think that you would resp- like? How do you respond to them? And you think, do you think it would be different if they were boys? Absolutely, absolutely different. Yeah. And, but uh, going back to the first one, which is how do you respond to them with regards to crying? Oh, when they cry, I, I mean, it depends. Yeah. It depends. Sometimes I'll tell them to 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 just just get up, or sometimes I'll, I'll you know, just kind of hug them and, and tell them that it's okay, and you know, be, just kind of talk about their feel. It's more of more feelings, more emotions than, than what I grew up with. You know, I grew up with nothing but boys. I have a twin brother and a, and a younger brother, so it's a lot more emotions, a lot more talking. Where before it was just like, hey, toughen up and <laughs> you know, get back out there. You know, so um, but I think if it was a boy. I, I, I probably would be different. I would be more, I think I would still, still be blunt, you know, and I would tell them like, you, you don't know how, how, how people are going to kind of see you crying as a boy, you know, other boys might see you as, as weak, but you, I feel like you need to grab attention to you. I don't know if that's right or wrong. I don't have a boy. So <laughs> You should get a boy, Ronnie. No, no, no. I'm good, man. Boy, I'm good. I, oh, man. I got my two girls. They're they're beautiful. I love them. And I'm, I'm full. <laughs> but I, full I, house, I, right? Yeah. I don't know. I guess because I never had to really, like, think about it. Like, what I would do. Um, In that show, uh, Full House. I was just <laughs> off topic. Full House. It's so funny because, you know, they have so little in the family. It's like, dude, Latinos have a full house, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's that's just a regular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So I I don't know I don't know. What do you do with your? How about you? You have two boys or a boy and a girl? I have a boy and a girl. Okay. Do you treat treat them differently? You know my my daughter. She's two years old. Uh, so th- you know her, she's in those uh, what do they call it terrible twos? Yeah. You know where they say no a lot, but and then they cry, and you got the, the development of tantrums. You know. Um. So for her, it's you know it's like uh you know. She, it is what it is. It is like uh, if, if 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 there's a safety concern and she wants to do something and I gotta stop her and she's crying, I'm not gonna just let her, you know, just because she wants to. Um, you know, as far as you know, here, here comes my boy. <laughs> 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 Hold on, take the chair if you want. Go ahead. Close that door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coming right in, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with with, with him, um, I I never you know, tell myself, or I never tell him not to cry. Um, I let it be, uh, and I let the emotion, whatever it is that he's experiencing, I sit with him in the emotion, you know. And yeah. that's, and I, I'm talking about context, contextually, 
in our property, you know, like yeah. in our house, in our home. So, you know, so whatever the emotion that's being elicited from his brain, I roll with it. You know, I don't try to stop it. My wife, I was telling you, she's the one that she'll say, stop crying, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't, I, yeah. I don't say that to my son. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if I would, I, I, I think I would probably try more to channel it of like, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I, I think I'll, but I didn't, I think I would be a little more strict. I wouldn't be as explaining, talking more about the feelings and stuff like that with, 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 if I had a boy. And, and you know, for me, I think it's because I'm comfortable with crying, you know? Yeah. And so for me, I, I don't even make it an issue. Like the crying isn't even an issue. So I don't even like talk about the crying. We talk about what's happening, you know, is there some disappointment? Um, is there pain? Um, you know, what's, you know, we talk about the, you know, the, the underlying, not just the crying itself, which is the manifestation of the emotion. We talk about what is happening, not yeah. so much about, you know, Hey, don't cry or do cry or whether it's right or wrong. We just, I don't even, I don't even go there. With yeah. Yeah. I think it's more of that, but yeah, especially with, yeah, with the girls, it was, it was more explaining why. And I don't really tell them don't, don't cry or anything like that. It's more of like, what's going on? How are you feeling? I'll use a different, there's like different, like, you know, um, emojis and stuff on feelings. So we'll do that kind of stuff. But I don't think I really dress like the crying. It's like, well, how are you feeling right now? Those type of things. But I don't know if I would do that with the boy. I, I, I probably would if they were younger and then maybe a little bit older. I would, I would have them channel it a, a little differently. You know, like I did, like, I would, like with me was with, you know, with, with sports and that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. And, and it's going to change, I think, you know, because we were talking about us being kids and, you know, we may go through the experience where like, you know, let's say 20 years from now, the perspective that we have currently right now could change. Um, you know, as we were saying from, from now to when, when I was a kid, it's definitely, there is a, a shift in it. And I think it's going to continue. I, I think society is, is continues. It's always evolving. Okay. It's nonstop. You know, yeah. the planet is evolving. So society has evolved too. And that's just one of those things that you, you cannot stop it. You know? Yeah. I think it's going to be, it's, it's going to look different in 10 years. You know, I'm just, excited to see what, what it's going to look like. <laughs> it, it, it is man. But I, I think just, I think with right now it's, I don't know, man. And, and I, I think I feel so strongly about it because I see how, how kids how the one that i've seen is more of like being scared than okay this is a challenge i need to overcome you know what i'm saying like i think that's kind of the shift that i'm kind of seeing of of just being scared i don't know if that makes sense but i mean I like it, uh scared of like uh of, 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 of like a, of, of like life thing. of like things that just happen you know what i mean like you know, a bad breakup, and they think that's going to be this humongous, you know, feelings like, well, that's how, what a breakup feels like. You know, when you're 17 years old, you break up with your boyfriend, your boyfriend or girlfriend, a couple of years, like it feels like everything's going to be terrible. But, <laughs> but I think it's, I don't know if it's just they're able to express it more than than we did when we were kids, or or what. But it's definitely a different, different. Um, I don't know, a, a display of emotions. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious to hear from, uh, you know, from, from other people around that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, About so yeah. That, you know, it's, uh, this whole thing. Yeah. So, uh, so again, this is just, I think this is just discussions that we're, that we're talking about. I mean, I'm not saying anybody's right or wrong. Um, I think that it's a discussion and, and see what you guys think. See if we can get some, uh, get some questions down below and uh, we'll, we'll kind of stay, stay on and see what people say. Yeah. All right, man. Share, so, share the experience and then thoughts. You know, it's like past, present, future. <laughs> <laughs> or just say you're wrong, Ronnie. Boys need to cry all the time. Nah. Right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. So Ronnie's inviting you to call him out. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the YouTube life, bro. You're always gonna get you know people. <laughs> <laughs> get something. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So all right, man. All right, thanks, guys. I appreciate your time, man. Hopefully we can have All some right. good discussions about this. All right, bro. I'll see you. Bye-bye.